grind, you've got to grind, you've got to grind, you've got to grind, which, well, is that is that right? Is that wrong? Well, there's no doubts that if you want to be good at something, anything in life, any discipline, in any domain, that you probably have to do something quite a lot to be good. There's very few people, if anybody on planet Earth, who, who gets to the very top without doing it a lot, right? Merely a donkey, Nicholas, merely a donkey. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> I want every player to know what helps them find their high performance mindset and what helps them avoid a low performance mindset and LPM and what helps them shift from LPM to HPM, you know, and that can be as simple as one thing or as it could be uh, slightly broader as a a couple of techniques or, or performance philosophies. It doesn't matter. But when you've got these terms in place, when you have this framework or structure, if we want to call it that, that enables us to be able to flex away from what we don't want onto what we want. And it also helps us to create an inner story and inner narrative every single day about what we want, which then uh, uh, invites in high performance on game day. So uh, I, I think, you know, if I was to summarize what I do, I help competitors and coaches but competitors to make sense of their world from an engagement learning and uh, competing perspective i talk about three p's participation progression performance participation progression performance the participation piece being the engagement piece which is kind of it encompasses the day-to-day well-being mental health uh you know trying to feel as good as one can be going into training and game day every single day and then as i said the progression piece is the mastery it's the learning the developing the improving and then the performance is the competing that consistent high performance under pressure so if we can have mental playbooks around these areas uh we uh, we are uh, inviting good habits, we invite in consistency, and so subsequently we give ourselves a better chance to enjoy what we're doing, improve, and compete. Okay, that is that is very interesting because I think, like, obviously you went into so much depth there, and the HPM is obviously a almost simple version for the athlete to remember in the, like, in the heights of battle in their game almost Very much. All, all all that like all that complex thinking that they probably have done it really strips it back to a few things that they really are the essence of their performance um and i think another question i wanted to ask was in terms of that and like the power of as you probably know like negative self schemas and your narrative that can form at a young age um in terms of i coach young footballers as well and the and if i think back to my career sort of the self narratives that i think about my game they were built when i was really young and just subconsciously as well so i think what would you say is the importance of coaching at a young age and how players at a young age should develop before I answer the question, I'm going to do the classic psychologist trick of uh, asking asking you a question back to your question. Okay. You talk yeah. about this. You, you use the term schema. Okay. So, and you're you're defining that as a, as a, as, a, as a narrative around your experiences, I suppose. Or, or correct me if I'm wrong. But what kind of schemas or what kind of narrative did you have around your your football as a consequence of, you know, your experiences at, at a young age? Uh, my, probably my strongest schema would be, I had to be a hard worker because Mm. at a young age, I didn't make a lot of football teams and I was never one of those players that they, no, no coach ever said, oh, he's technically brilliant, but it was always his attitude is so professional. So even when I had maybe built up the skills where I was at a professional technical level, I always if my confidence was down, that was the first thing to go because I would look for evidence that would fall into that negative self schema that Jack, you've never been technically at the level. You've always had to work hard. And I, and that's probably something that I tried to challenge, but once it's so powerful, obviously that once it's built, even if you try, forget about it, it's very hard to challenge. Yeah. I I think it's really interesting because, um, 
as you're speaking, it's making me think of of the work of a, a wonderful uh, American psychologist um, who's actually he's not a sports psychologist, but he uh, is very much a personality scientist, um, uh, Dr. Colin DeYoung. Um, I think he's uh, he's he's based in Massachusetts, and he's done some incredible work within this sphere of personality science. Um, and he um, um, within his work, he talks a lot about the things that influence our traits. Okay, our personality traits, and he breaks these things down uh, to, to 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 three things to to, to three ca to, to to three characteristics that influence our traits goals interpretations and strategies goals interpretations and strategies and other personality scientists might talk about you know might broaden that to about beliefs for example i mean listening to you i'm i feel i'm hearing some beliefs there um schemas as you've said um th there's a whole raft of things that that scientists might break this down to but i like this idea of three things goals the goals i set myself the interpretation i have about my world and the world around me and the strategies i use um, as i interpret things and as i try to reach for my goals and so listening to you there and again you could exchange the word interpretation for beliefs you know this interpretation of I have to work hard, this interpretation of I'm not a technical player. Um, these interpretations can both, again, I'm going to use that notion of helping and hindering. You know, there's nothing wrong with an interpretation of I have to work hard in my football to be good. OK, you could say that's a very healthy interpretation, but look at where the limit might lie. I write about this all the time in terms of these memes on social media that talk about the grind. You've got to grind. You've got to grind. You've got to grind, which, well, is that is that right? Is that wrong? Well, there's no doubt that if you want to be good at something, at anything in life, any discipline, in any domain, that you probably have to do something quite a lot to be good. There's very few people, if anybody on planet Earth, who, who gets to the very top without doing it a lot, right? So no, there's no doubts about that. However, we need to do it for a long time to get good, right? And we need to have a lot of energy for a long time to get good. So then we go, okay, well, then hard work and the grind, well, maybe we need to look at this in a slightly more nuanced manager, ma manner. Maybe we need to look at this from the perspective of, well, I need to do this a lot, but I also need to enjoy doing this. I have to, I have to enjoy engaging in my sport for a long time. So if at a very young age, and if you're a coach of young players, um, I don't know, and I'll go in at seven, eight, nine years old. Yeah.